The success of Gajura in 1954 put into motion a second film by Toho to capitalize on the success of the first Kaiju film. Godzilla Raids Again would be released the following year in 1955 and would become the first film to showcase an epic battle between two Kaiju rivals. Adam Giris would be born from the same nuclear events and a second Godzilla would rise to battle him to the death. In the story, a group of scientists researched Angiris and found information in a book written by a Polish scientist. The Polish scientist's book explained Godzilla and Angiris lived at the same time millions of years ago, and because of this, an intense rivalry between the two monsters was reawakened and they renewed their long ago battle. Godzilla became such a huge success that director Motoyoshi Oda had to quickly film the sequel so Toho could get it into theaters. Even with the numerous special effects scenes required, the second film was in theaters in less than six months after the original film was released. As the special effects director for Godzilla Rays Again, Eiji Tsurubaya wanted the fight scenes to be filmed in slow motion, but the camera technician accidentally undercranked the camera instead of overcranking it, resulting in the action appearing faster than reality. Tesserabaya liked the effect and used it in the film. The Godzilla suit created for the second film was somewhat similar to the first one in Gojira. The suit was streamlined to fit Haru Nakajima and make the movements for his suit acting more comfortable. The new streamlined design would allow Nakajima to move freely and violent-like while filming. Godzilla's iconic dorsal fins were kept close to the same size as the original suit. Overall, the new suit maintained the look of terror and the menace the original film brought to theater audiences in the 1954 Gojira. This would be the only film Godzilla's dorsal fins would not glow when he used his nuclear breath. Godzilla Raids Again was the series debut for both Hiroshi Koizumi and Yoshio Tetsuchiya. The actors would appear in five series films. Koizumi would appear in three Showa era films, as well as in both the Heisei and Millennium, and Tetsuchiya would appear in four Showa films and in the Heisei era of Toho's Godzilla film productions. The 1956 American adaptation of Godzilla, Godzilla the King of Monsters, was not the first attempt at an adaptation of one of Godzilla's films. It was a film that was never made and would have been called The Volcano Monsters. The plot line was similar to Godzilla Raids again, and the battle with Angiris was based on a Tyrannosaurus and an Ankylosaurus who are found battling and are captured and brought to San Francisco. Later they would awake and do battle, causing destruction to the city. Unfortunately, the rights could not be obtained and the movie was never made. In 1958, producers Paul Schreiberman, Edmund Goldman, and Newton P. Jacobs purchased the rights to Godzilla Raids again and dubbed the film in English. Instead of marketing the film as a sequel to the original 1954 Godzilla film, Schreiberman decided to change Godzilla's name to Gigantus and change his trademark roar to Angiris' roar to convince the audiences that they were seeing a new kaiju. This act of changing Godzilla's name and iconic roar was criticized by fans and critics. Paul Schreiberman would regret this decision many years later. A very interesting fact from the American version of Gigantus, a unknown actor at the time who would play the iconic Lieutenant Hikaru Zulu in the original Star Trek series, was one of the many voice actors hired for dubbing of this film. George Taki also become part of the American pop culture, just as Godzilla has remained a legend of folklore in the eyes of the fans who love him. <laughs>